for all that you are and do and for having me here. I feel so grateful to be part of the Trojan family and I bring you warm embraces from Hawaii. I am so happy to be seeing students live once again. You know, your faces are full of brilliance and promise and you make me feel buoyant and optimistic. In the last two decades, I have visited a lot of schools as a peace educator to speak with and learn from students and communities. About 10 years ago, I took such a trip to Okinawa, Japan, where I visited the Okinawa Peace Memorial Park. In the far right western corner of the park lies the so-called cornerstones of peace. These are rows of zigzagging black stone slabs with a circular gathering space and a cliff edge as a backdrop. Scores of Okinawans committed suicide by flinging themselves off those same cliffs, choosing death over capture by the Americans during World War II. The zigzag shape of the black stone slabs were described by my host as Okinawan waves of peace, going past the place of suffering where these soldiers had met their end and across the Pacific Ocean to the entire world. Monuments often carry powerful and instructive stories. This one moved me a lot because as I read the names inscribed on each stone wall, I realized that there were the names of all those who had lost their lives in the Battle of Okinawa, irrespective of nationality. Australians, Japanese, Europeans, others were acknowledged together in this monument in recognition of losses experienced on all sides as well as the urgent responsibility to build peace together. It was a really powerful statement of shared humanity, an illustration of the South African concept of Ubuntu. I am because you are. We are more human together. I thought to myself, if only we could all really take in such lessons. I mean, take them in deeply into our psyches and our spirits. The same lesson Dr. Martin Luther King noted in his letter from Birmingham jail, that we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny, and whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Perhaps then we would finally be able to make some progress and commit to what is needed to build a more peaceful and just world. Such lessons would have to be interwoven into each of our life tapestries and educational experiences. And the younger, the better, right? On that trip, I also enjoyed a Japanese art form called kintsugi, where a broken vase or pot is glued back together with gold binding to make the vessel more valuable than it had been prior to its breaking. I loved that idea that we can infuse artistry and invest commitment into broken things and times and thus make them more beautiful and resilient. I think many of us intuitively admire individuals and communities who have struggled, who have suffered, who have lost, who have known defeat because they have found empathetic humility resilient dignity, courageous will, and layered identity. All of you have suffered. You've all been bruised by the events of recent years, the pandemic, climate change, racial violence, political strife, and so on. So today, I do want to tell you that you're not forgotten, that you are cherished and magnificent. And though these have been lonely, you know, lonely times where real connection with one another has been hard to come by, the gold that I believe we can all use to bind these broken times is to see one another more clearly, listen to one another more deeply, and collaborate more creatively, and I know that you are doing that. You're doing that as students, you're doing that as faculty, and as a community. And this is a peace building to which I'm asking all of you to commit to even more deeply as you move forward from this space. Peace building is so many things. Some of you may define it as personal peace, meditation, anger management. Others may say that peace is interpersonal, being heard by others, having agency in the workplace, developing the skills of nonviolent communication, mediation, restorative justice. Others of you might think of it as human rights, climate justice, nuclear disarmament, or indigenous 
innovation. There are as many definitions and connotations of peace as there are people willing to be engaged in seeking it. And everyone's definition has value and might. However, too many of us think simplistically about peace. At this time, when we're working to emerge from trauma, too many are focused on negative peace. Negative peace isn't negative, but it is insufficient. It just means the lack of acute violence, but not the necessity, the presence of loving community. Negative peace focuses on what is not there, in other words, rather than all that is and can be nourished by upstanders, by you. So as we think about the fabric of our communities, building a more just and loving world requires us to use moral imagination and creative exercise of our will for the sake of positive peace building. Let's not just do conflict avoidance and expect that all will be well. Now more than ever, we have to rebrand how people are thinking about peace building and acknowledge that in order to be truly positive influences in the world, we have to have the courage to see peace as a verb, as a call to action, as a responsibility that all of us must take together as citizens of this world. So as you contemplate your personal definition of peace now, please truly believe that each of you is here and can engage in positive peace building. You have a place to build movements. You can impact the flow of the future in whatever profession or career you are entering into. And you will be more successful and better off because of those efforts. Perhaps you are thinking, Auntie Maya, that's a lovely idea, but it feels really abstract. Where do we begin? Maybe it's easiest to start with yourself, your environment, your relationships, your health. Begin with the things that are closest to you. See yourselves for who you are in all of your resplendence. Articulate your gifts, your personal needs, what you like, what you don't like. Be realistic about the opportunities in front of you and for your own internal growth. Sometimes it's only from a place of deep reflection that you can begin to see and understand the needs of your community. Personal peace could mean a process of post-traumatic growth through therapy, developing a daily mindfulness or kindness practice, making room for connection with nature that makes you true stewards. Begin to accept yourself, all of your layers, deepen your own compassion towards others the options go on and on. And once you've determined that combination of strategies, tools, and habits for personal peace that work for you, you will feel more courageous in seeking leadership opportunities in the spaces closest to you. Name and nourish yourself, in other words, so that you begin to feel brave about service, about advocating for others, about choosing forgiveness, and speaking out when you witness injustice. Becoming an active peace-building leader in your community definitely does not require a special role, title, or invitation. All of you already have impact, whether it's through the coffee you buy each morning at your local coffee shop or the food pantry where you volunteer on Wednesdays or the sports league you joined to connect with people across neighborhoods. Each of you are constantly engaging with community every day. So embrace your peace-building leadership identity as you do. Own your power to impact your surroundings in benevolent ways, working to make those around you feel cared for and valued, and increasing your awareness around places in your neighborhoods or organizations where injustice may be occurring. Think of it like this. The world, as huge as it may seem, is just a large cluster of different communities. So if everyone treated their community like a giant family of their own, the world could be a place where everyone feels valued and uplifted in family or ohana. A healthy, functional family, of course, right? So you might ask yourself questions like, am I widening my sphere of influence where I work and live? Am I expressing myself with honesty and courage, am I finding ways to serve others and the means to change organizational structures that could improve the lives of others? As I tell my students, we all make ripples, you just have to find the right place to enter the stream and then choose to step in the water and get wet. 
In all of this, I don't want to gloss over the fact that there are indeed traumas present. These are times of illness, strife, and storm at home and abroad, and it might feel easier to ignore the violent conflicts in Ukraine, Syria, Pakistan, Nigeria, Venezuela, or other spaces. It's hard to stay sturdy in the face of incredible socioeconomic and geopolitical divisiveness right here in the U.S. In all instances, there are probably days when you want to retreat and seek solitude, and while making time to care for your mental health is really important. Thank you, USC, for doing that for your students. Too much isolation can be dangerous, too, when we are trying to build more peaceful, whole, well communities. So please also consider how you are hitching your future to others and be deliberate with yourself, living with intention. If you can take up this charge, I promise you, you will also feel more resilient and find yourself with that greater sense of purpose, that North Star, that guiding star. A lot of these lessons are ones that I learned from my mom, who introduced me to social justice at a very early age. She led these development projects for microfinance, rural credit programs across different villages in Indonesia and elsewhere in South and Southeast Asia. And she'd take me to the village and explain to me that feeding one's family right here could have a ripple effect that is enormous on the larger economy of the region and the country. And I learned quickly from her that every action informs another and why it's important for all of us to really place frontline lives into our vision, as doing so unlocks compassion, innovation, and creative sol problem solving from people who know, from people who have experienced and seen that suffering. She never allowed herself to think narrowly about these folks. She had a strength-based approach and also acknowledged their gifts, and she built family with them wherever she went. She talked story and broke bread and listened and learned from everyone. And I have found that even years after her death, people in the villages where she worked still remember her. She delighted in human quirkiness and never started from a place of fear, but always from a place of openness and curiosity. She and I would gaze at the full moon in Jakarta, Manhattan, or Hawaii, and she would spin winding and wonderful tales of the collective human experience. And when she died, she asked that her ashes be scattered in the ocean because how else will I get to all the people and places I love so much? Of course, I thought of her at the Okinawan Peace Memorial. And I imagine each of you has that person or persons in your life who have shaped your peace-building identity and been a source of inspiration. As you embark on this next phase of your personal journey, I hope you will find ways to continually remind yourself of what those people have taught you and that you will see their lessons as lifelines when the going gets hard. Keep reflecting on their lives and examples as you make your own choices. In addition to the memories of mom, one of the other things that has helped me to stay motivated is art. A few years ago, I founded a nonprofit called The Peace Studio, entirely devoted to providing artists and journalists with the tools and resources needed to tell restorative narratives, find communities, stay resilient, and use their creativity to have a positive impact essentially training them to become strong peace-building leaders. I believe that artists and journalists are the ones who have the most influence on whether people in society act with determination and compassion or succumb to fear, anxiety, and anger. With art, we have the power to imagine worlds before they exist. When our world's artists and journalists craft their work with a sense of responsibility to humankind, they help us to feel a greater sense of hope and give us courage to take action, even in the most challenging circumstances. So whether it's visual art, music, poetry, dance, storytelling, or something entirely different, my hope is that you will take the time to discover the art in your life, the beauty, whatever is needed to daily maintain your creative peace-building efforts. 
So I'll close with two pieces of advice that have served me well in life thus far. The first is a phrase in Indonesian, cuci mata, which means to wash the eyes. So to me, it means that we refresh our gaze. We see the world anew. We change the way that we see one another. We find new pathways through. It requires that we change the way we see ourselves at times too. It's the ability that we all have inside of us to see one another from multiple perspectives and to carry many stories and to be layered and loving. If you take the time throughout this next phase of your life to embrace discomfort and look through the lenses opposite from yours, or at least through the eyes of different or distant others, you will find many solutions to our world's most challenging problems in unusual places. Washing the eyes, cuci mata, it's positive peace building. Committing to it as a practice can make you a lifelong learner and a powerful leader. The second piece of advice I offer is this notion of trying to see and lift up the gifts of others. And know that that is an incredible strength. Wherever you are, no matter who you are with, notice the strengths of your friends, your family, your colleagues, and be active in helping them to use their gifts and achieve their dreams. Instead of seeing the world competitively, when you cherish your relationships and do your best to love everyone who crosses your path, as hard as that is sometimes, you empower your imagination, and our world is too fragile not to be collaborative, to not be optimistic, and to not trust that we can really learn from each other. So remember that peace-building leadership isn't top-down leadership. It's the work of those who lead from beside, behind, and beneath, and includes all of you, every single one of you, people of every demographic. If you are an artist, make us feel something expressive and expansive. If you are a storyteller, focus on telling stories that are not yet known that help us to know how to find the clearing. Spotlight those that have been too long in the shadows. Bring important stories from periphery to center. If you are a counselor or a teacher, think about how you can build bridges between school and community to nourish wellness. If you are a construction worker, an urban planner, a designer, an architect, build spaces that deepen personal peace and interpersonal connection, or build shelters or tiny homes that create pathways from houselessness to solvency and safety. Once you discover your inner knowing, turn that into action. And for those of you who are young, as young as you may feel, you are ready, thanks to your education at USC, your childhood experiences, to be true representatives of the generation that is inheriting everything and being burdened with a lot. I know I've pointed out a responsibility that you have, but I ask you not to think of it as something too stressful. It is beautiful and empowering, and when we do the positive peace building work together, it is big fun. So feel joy. This is a joyful moment. The first baccalaureate in three years, right? Are you feeling joyful? Yes. <laughs> Celebrate. Have fun. And as you go to this job or that, or this place or that place, go with the intention of building your positive peace framework. This is vital work, and it's brave work through the storms ahead. Turn your knowledges, your successes, your failures into impactful art and movement building. And yes, you have many knowledges, many wisdoms. <laughs> Be complicated. Use the gold of your energy, your manna, your spirit, your ingenuity to mend, renew, and heal. And across the Pacific, I, as part of your extended ohana, will always cheer you on with deep gratitude and respect, and I will send plenty of aloha your way. Mahalo nui for all that you are, and congratulations on your graduation. Amazing. Well done. <laughs>